Uh, so we're here at the Crowd Cow offices. My name is Jacob. My name is Nick. And uh, today we have a Wagyu, a Japanese Wagyu half packer brisket. And uh, we have an upcoming event, a big event, Japanese A5 Wagyu packer briskets, only on Crowd Cow, a very exclusive cut that's never been imported. And uh, I encourage you to check out crowdcow.com slash Japanese Wagyu uh, brisket to get more info and sign up when this event goes live on July 2nd. Um, but wanted to highlight this cut in particular because um, while a packer brisket is common, again, packer is just the flat and the point, also called the deckel uh, muscles together, was a little bit less common is a half packer brisket. And so Nick, do you want to talk a little bit about this half packer? Maybe you can also turn it over and show people the cut. Yeah, absolutely. This is a, this is a really unique cut um, that I think folks are going to enjoy. So again, like Jacob said, usually split uh, sort of across the actual brisket, the packer, um, as it comes from beef packers. Um, you can see this cross section here of the flat, which is really, really beautiful and marbled. Again, like A5 uh, marble grades um, here. So normally that cut to separate the uh, flat and the point, again, referred to sometimes as the deckel, is really a cut kind of right here. Um, what we did with these particular briskets are cut them longitudinally. So imagine there's another mirror image of this on this side. Um, you can see how big this thing is. I mean, it is, it is absolutely a monster and has so much beautiful intermuscular marbling and a really good fat cap on it too. Um, so yeah, cut it longitudinally, um, creates kind of this product. So you kind of see the cross section here. This is that, that point muscle right here. And this is the f that flat. You see how long that is. So. And as Nick said, like this is, it's it's really cool to actually see it cut this way because you almost never get to see a cross section of a flat like this. And I mean, this is so obviously a five. The marbling on this, like brisket, is a quote unquote lean cut. And this is just insane. Like if you want juicy, uh, you know, tender brisket, it's not going to get any better than a five wagyu. Um, and so. We actually photographed this yesterday so we could have some images uh, for when it goes live um, on, on the site. And so, you know, of course, if you thaw it out, you photograph it, you got to cook it, trim it up. So today we're trimming it. Um, and so Nick's going to kind of walk us through that, um, what he's looking for um, and what he'll be doing. Um, and while he's doing that, I guess I'm going to start off giving you a little bit more context for why this is kind of such an amazing cut and so exclusive and rare. So um, if, you, if you're familiar with Crowd Cow, uh, which you probably are if you're following us, or if you've ever visited our Wagyu pages or read any of our Wagyu blog posts, you already know um, that you know, Japanese Wagyu, true authentic Japanese Wagyu, is pretty rare and exclusive. Um, you know, there is American Wagyu that you can get that is you know, genetically uh, descended from the Japanese, you know, Japanese Wagyu cattle, um, but what this is, this is directly sourced from uh, Kagoshima, Japan. I should also mention in our sale, we will have a very, very, very few, less than 20 olive Wagyu briskets, um, but this is Kagoshima. And the re one of the reasons that Japanese A5 Wagyu is so rare is because there's a, a quota uh, and a limit on how much that you can import um, a finished product into the US each year. And so when there's a quota or limit, uh, that quota is set by weight. So what that means is, is that if you're gonna import a pound of Japanese Wagyu, you're pretty much always going to be importing one of those center cuts, the strip loin, the ribeye, the tenderloin. And so there's not really anyone who's ever imported these briskets. Um, but we're always on a quest to bring new, exciting, exclusive cuts to our stakeholders. Uh, that's what we did with Kagoshima two years ago. That's what we did last year with Olive Wagyu, bringing the rarest steak on the planet uh, to you guys. And we wanted to take that, you know, build on that legacy. And so this summer, uh, we're bringing the A5 Wagyu brisket to you. Um, so that's the context on why this cut is really so rare and exclusive, never been brought over. Um, so why don't we go ahead and start trimming a little bit of it. Nick, do you want to talk to about what you're looking for yeah. and the kind of the steps you follow? Yeah, absolutely. So with a typical packer brisket, I would try to leave a lot of the fat on. Again, this is just you know protection for the brisket over these long, long smoke times, you know, 14, 18 hours, depending on the size. Um, this has such great, beautiful intermuscular marbling, as you can see, that 
while the fat cap is great, there are some um, sort of edits I'm gonna make here, and, and really it's gonna just be sort of evening out the fat cap to help with sort of even cook, bring that heat into all the, the different parts of this uh, brisket um, evenly and to make sure that, I mean, this fat renders really, really quickly at, at low, much lower temperatures than like Angus cattle or typical of the fat, the fat you see here in the United States. So I don't want too much on, otherwise you could potentially create flare-ups or other you know, issues in cooking. Um, but but to the, you really don't need to trim that much. It's not like, you know, this is, we're trying to go down to the lean here. We're really just looking for really areas of like thick fat. And you can feel it if you run your hand over these briskets, you can really feel the areas that have a really, you know, significant depth of fat here. And it's really going to be a little softer. You can kind of see this pebbled structure right here in this fat. Yeah. You don't want all that on there, and you can you can even see how like kind of soft and mushy that is. Whereas versus like right here, this nice nice hard you know hard white fat is very is very sort of much much more solid because there's meat sort of much closer to the surface under that. So we're going to just do a little bit of trimming. We're not going to go too deep. We're going to kind of see what's going on there and trim into this just to kind of even it up. Again, you don't want to take too much off. Um, I'm not throwing this fat away. Uh, this is, you know, liquid gold. So just trying to clean this up, get some of the oxidated spots, oxidated spots that, uh, you know, because this probably has been open before. Um, you want to flip this around because if you look on the inside of here, some of this gets a little bit deeper um, at, at the actual separation of the point and the, and the sorry, the flat and the point here. So again, you're, you're not looking to actually do some significant trimming. It's more just like kind of spots where it's too deep. So kind of, if you run your hand along, run your finger along, look for those soft spots and just kind of give it a little bit of a, a trim. Um, you're really looking for surface. Be very, very careful. You don't want to trim into the meat, um, obviously. Um, but like stuff hanging off like this, that will actually like, and during cooking, start to render off, start to fall, fall off and actually potentially fall down and create some kind of like negative effect. So just kind of clean that up a little bit. Um, these are pretty clean coming from um, the packer. So they really just need some some very limited trimming. Yeah, I should mention to you briefly uh, as it relates to the product spec for these briskets. So we have two primary products that we'll be selling in this event. We've got um, a full packer brisket and then we've got half packers. And the reason for the half packer is we wanted to break some, there's two reasons. One is that the full untrimmed packer briskets, um, A5 Wagyu packer briskets, are huge. They're like, they average about 30 pounds. And some of your, you know, if, if you've cooked a brisket before, you're like, oh my goodness, like 30 pounds, how, how and why are they so big? Um, and there's a couple reasons for that. So one, just Japanese Wagyu cattle are, are very large relative to you know uh, your standard maybe Angus um, because they get finished out longer. Uh, they're going to be finished out you know maybe more like 30, 36 months um, versus you know a standard cow here in the U.S. or steer rather is going to be you know finished out probably something closer to anywhere like 18 to 22 months, um, and so they are much larger. Also. The bigger reason, however, is because in Japan they actually seam cut the brisket. So in the U.S., you're gonna uh, the brisket's gonna be separated um, between the fifth and sixth rib, if I have that right. Uh, yep. And so in Japan they actually seam cut the whole muscle out, which means that you're getting some of this meat that would in the U.S. would otherwise be found like in the in the neck or the chuck maybe, uh, and then the other end of the uh, the brisket flat. That would actually extend into the into the plate. Yeah. And the plate and navel actually. Okay, the that plate part. And, and so yeah, so it's a much longer, bigger piece of meat, and mm -hmm. uh, that's why they're so large. And so um, cutting them in half, creating a half pack or brisket, uh, both gives you a piece of meat that's a little bit more manageable, and you know it's also going to be a little bit better, uh, you know, value or, or lower price point than you know full thirty pound brisket, obviously. Um, so it's pretty, pretty, pretty nice. And so we wanted to uh, be sure that we kind of showed you guys what this product looks like and be able to answer any questions that come through. Um, are we seeing any questions pop in? I haven't seen any yet. Okay. 
worries. Yeah, this, this actually looks pretty good. So this came pretty clean. Again, kind of trim this up. You know, this soft fat, again, renders really quickly and oxidizes quickly. Um, again, be careful. We got a little bit of lean showing right here, but that'll be okay. Um, other than that, I think this, uh, you know, I think this looks pretty good, actually. How are you going to, uh, talk a little bit, Nick, about how you're going to prep this in terms of seasoning, um, what you're planning to cook it on and how you're planning to cook it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, fl the flavor of Wagyu is so unique compared to, you know, your, your domestic beef we see here that I really want the flavor to shine through. So I'm planning just a, a standard Dalmatian rub, you know, salt and pepper. Yeah. Uh, salt, pepper, smoke, and thyme is really the recipe you need for a great brisket. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna take this, put it on the smoker today, um, over some post oak, which is very classic, you know, sort of Texas, uh, you know, style brisket smoking woods, and then again a very simple rub of salt and pepper. Um, and then I'm gonna be watching this thing like a hawk in terms of temperature. Um, I don't leave any, any chance when I cook briskets. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't say it and forget. I've actually got some uh, some some monitoring uh, technology that I use. But we're gonna take this, you know, probably like 203, 205 degrees, you know, typical, uh, you know, Texas, you know, cooking style for brisket. Yeah. Um, we're gonna bring it into the stall around 160. Uh, let it sit there, we're gonna wrap, we're gonna wrap this point. I got some nice peach paper at home. Protect that, make sure it doesn't, or the, sorry, the flat, make sure that it doesn't dry out. Uh, and then after that, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna give it a little nap. We're gonna give it a couple hours, you know, to, to rest. Let this, let this beautiful fat in here sort of redistribute again. Like you can expect it's kind of 225, uh, 250 cooking temperatures. This stuff is absolutely going to liquefy. The nice thing, it's going to a lot of it's going to be held in by these two layers. Yeah. If so. you haven't if you haven't watched it already, we have a video on our site and on our YouTube channel uh, that we call. I think the video is titled "Nonstop Juice." Like we cut. Uh, we were actually with Stephen Reichlin a few weeks ago. We cooked uh, and did a whole how-to on the full Packer brisket, and it was just otherworldly i've never seen anything like it when we cut that thing in half and separated the point and flat and it was just like non-stop uh fat and juice flow out of it it was insane and uh nick's trimmed off a little bit of fat but for these half packers they've already come partially trimmed um to like a one inch fat cap or so so there's not quite as much to remove as you might have with a full untrimmed packer brisket but um, I mean, Nick, correct me if I'm wrong, but basically I know there's different types of fat you're looking to remove, but pretty much all that fat would be all well and good for rendering into tallow, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, don't, don't throw any of this fat yeah. away because it, it, uh, it makes the best cooking fat yeah. around for sure. Um, so, you know, take those trimmings, you can put them in a bag and freeze them just fine. Yeah. Or if you want to actually put them in like a rendering kettle, which in this case can be a a Dutch oven, a heavy piece of cookware, and in a, a very, very low oven. Um, this stuff will render, you know, a beautiful golden color, and uh, is, is really, really great to cook with. Not, not just meat, but I mean, can be used like any kind of cooking fat. Yeah, and, and I can't say enough. Like, um, you know, what an amazing piece of meat it is. Like, there are probably, you know, I'm, I'm going to say it would not surprise like. I feel pretty confident saying there's probably less than 100 people who've ever smoked a Japanese Wagyu brisket in America. Uh, it's just such a hard to find cut uh, that no one's really ever imported or made widely available before. Um, and a couple of us, you know, when we tried the tried one uh, for the very first time, I mean, this has been a year in the making. So we actually tried one of these, um, you know, last fall, end of last fall, maybe early Q4, and so blown away. Like it was easily if not the top, one of the you know, best three pieces of meat I've ever tasted. Certainly the best and most amazing brisket I've ever tasted. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, we're, we're super excited to, to bring these to you guys. Um, and su yeah, just super excited for this kind of meat. Absolutely, can't wait to cook it. Yeah, anything else you want to add or cover? All right, any questions come in? Um, mainly about the, the low and slow cut. You yeah. mentioned T25 kind of yeah, 220, 225 is a good temperature for, for low and slow smoking. Um, if you're using an, uh, a, a charcoal cooker, uh, like a green egg, um, I would be really careful about the size of your fire. To start, it's really tough to bring those down, and you're going to want to start from the right foot. So small small fire, don't overshoot to like 400 and try to bring it down. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're using an uh, electric feed, you know, like a Traeger or something like that, 
uh, it's going to be really easy. It's like cooking in an oven. Yeah, I, I would say having actually uh, had the fortune of seeing a few of these done, um, you one one thing that's nice is because they're so fatty, they're actually a little bit more forgiving than your average brisket. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that said, uh, you know, you know, I know some people like are really intimidated. Like, hey, how do I even cook an A5 Wagyu steak? And now you're talking about a brisket, so much bigger. Um, and those sorts of things, like you should not like uh, you should not be like. There's no problem with like smoking this for a couple hours. If you want to finish it in the oven, you're still going to get a great you know smoky taste. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously the most important thing is you know not to mess up a, such a beautiful piece of meat. Um, and so you know, double check your equipment, make sure it's something you're comfortable with. Um, you know, so while I wouldn't necessarily say this, you know, try this for your first brisket ever. Um, on you know a straight up charcoal grill, um, you could do it as your first, like in, in the oven or just a few hours on the smoke, uh, and then transition it. Um, and, and don't let it intimidate you. It's actually it's a beautiful piece of meat, um, and, and you really don't want to miss out on it uh, if you can get one. Yeah, so. absolutely. This I mean this thing's only going to take smoke for. I don't know, maybe eight hours before you know you actually end up wrapping it, yeah. and then you know then it's just cooking. So, which yep. can be accomplished by an oven. Um, you get a little bit of more kind of that wood flavor if you do it over a, a smoker. But yep. I think you're going to turn out with excellent results no matter what you do yeah. with this. Just be very careful about final cook temps and uh, the the temp, the overall temperature, your atmosphere temperature, your cooker. Yeah. All right. Well, that wraps it up, guys. Thank you so much for those of you who are able to join our stream. And uh, again, check out our site, uh, slash uh, crackout.com slash Japanese Wagyu Briskets. Be, be sure to sign up uh, for when this sale goes live in a couple weeks. Thanks.